Meanwhile, President Mahmoud Buhari's executive order granting financial autonomy to the legislature and judiciary at the state level has attracted mixed reactions from Nigerians. As some lawyers and politicians hailed the move, others said the effort is too little to address the humongous challenges full restructuring of the country entails. The president signed the executive order number 10 into law based on the power vested in him as the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria under Section 5 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 as amended. And now I'm joined by Ifed Dayo Iyaniwura, the chairman, Interparty Advisory Committee, Ekiti State. Thank you, Mr. Ifed Dayo, for joining us on the news. Yeah, good afternoon. Good afternoon My, to you. Yeah, it's a pleasure of mine. Is the signing of the executive order by Mr. President for the implementation of financial autonomy for the state, legislature, and judiciary a right move? Yes. Uh, well, the executive order could be described as laudable. It's also praiseworthy because it will establish and strengthen the principle of separation of powers and make all harms of government truly independent. We can, as, we can also see in another form of being a potential to kickstart the long-awaited rebalancing of this nation. As a fact, if I know, going by the provisions of the new executive order, the Accountant General of the Federation will have the power to deduct from source the allocations due to such states in the Federation account and pay the funds directly to such state legislatures and judiciaries in the event of the failure of any state government to release allocations meant for its legislature or judiciary. Now, doesn't, don't you think this creates room and the possibility for corruption, as many people have alluded to? Uh, well, uh, I want to believe that that is indeed another ball game. What we are concerned about is the effectiveness and the implementation of this order. As long as it complies with the doctrine of separation of powers, which in the Constitution makes the funding of the judiciary and that of the legislative independent of the executive. Now, it is the duty of the citizens, which I want to believe that our interest on this is to see that the grant of autonomy for both the legislative and judiciary translates to good governance in the, in, in the recess of the world for the advantage of our people. So on the issue of the position of uh, Ankata General, with the interest of the governors. That's another bridge, which of course when we get, we'll, cross, we'll cross it over. And in line with the separation of powers, some people have said that already the federal legislature and judiciary are enjoying financial autonomy in line with constitutional provisions, which have made it possible for them to receive the allocations from source, and that this should suffice in place of the autonomous executive order that was passed by Mr. President. Do you agree to that? Yeah. Absolutely, we want, just like what I said, the position of Mr. President is actually justified because this is, is, compli is complies with the doctrine of separation of powers, so to say. And it's as well as trying in, this, in the Constitution, Section 121, Subsection 3 of 99 Constitution as amended. The issue we have with this, with this matter is, is all about interest interest of the executive. You could imagine some governors kicked against it, which of course to us is unpalatable. Because what we know about this is simply that it may interest you to know that most of these governors exercise and overbearing powers in their respective states, which of course does not all go well for our precious democracy. In reality, most of the governors have agenda and try to make sure to get around the obstacles that get in the way of that agenda. So we must first of all place the interest of the nation above every possible personal interest. In fact, I, let me interject here. Interestingly, you did make mention about some governors kicking against the Executive Order 10. Now, these are grieved governors. They see the signing of the Executive Order as a breach of the ongoing talks between them and the presidency on how to go about the autonomy. Now, don't you think they are right about this, given the fact that there was already um, an ongoing talks between the presidency and these governors? Well, I don't, I don't see anything the governors could do. Because if, if, I, if, I, if I have to be so realistic to talk about these arms of government, one will realize that we have three branches. And the three of them cannot do without each other. 
Like, for instance, now, the legislative branch of government tasked with responsibility of writing uh, repealing the laws, while the executive itself also depend on these laws written by the legislative to be implemented and be enforced. And the judiciary itself, as another branch, is also tasked with responsibility of judging citizens based on the law written by the legislative branch. So what the Mr. President did is even long overdue. So for the governors that kicked against it, we are not surprised. But I want to tell you there is nothing they could do as long as this order is in line with the doctrine of separation of powers. All right, finally. The worst they could do is to approach court for adjudication, which, which to us we see as uh, uh, what we seems to be unfounded because they are taking the case to court and we Nigeria will be waiting to see judiciary educating such a case, possibly against themselves, if they will. And so are you saying they don't stand any chance at litigation? Is that what you're saying? Because many of these governors, they are grief governors, say they, they definitely see litigation in view. You're saying they don't stand any chance? Absolutely. Will judiciary adjudicate a case against itself, especially a case we have at hand? Well, I recall, recall that the agitations... If, if yeah, recall that it was reported that two groups had established a committee to work out modalities for autonomy just before the COVID-19 crisis. Now, the presidency had, through the late chief of staff, Malam Abakiari, engaged the governors on the autonomy models for the next constitutional review. And this negotiation had not been concluded before Kiari died. Now, do you think, in the light of this, that it stands a chance at litigation? Well, there have been there have been agitation for this long before now. I, I, I want to believe, I, I can vividly recall the, the, the issue between Olisa Bakoba versus AGF then, that judicial funding should be dependent of the executive. Now, it is not a journey of today. For the late Abake Yari, for his inability to make this thing possible before, before he gave up the ghost, I want to believe this is the right time that such thing wanted to happen. And that is why we're handling it now. Mr. Fedario Yanniwura, it's been a pleasure having you join us on the news. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir.